Lord. Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. Man, you can read through here in the book of Chronicles and several, several other places. And man, it's one war and another war. And, and a good day and a bad day and a bunch of bad days and a bunch of trouble and a bunch of storms and issues. And I thought, man, if that's not where we're living at, I don't know where we're at. Right. Wars and rumors of wars and this one being attacked. And, and you say, preacher, you're talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about far more than that. You're being attacked and I'm being attacked and this one's being attacked. And doesn't seem like anybody cares. Right. Doesn't seem like there's any help. Doesn't seem like there's any hope. Amen. It seems like we're all in trouble. We're all, all getting worse every day. But then I read these verses right here, and I'm not going to read you everything I read, but I'm going to read about the first seven or eight verses right here, and I'm going to read some message tonight entitled The Peace of God. Amen. The Peace of God. And chapter number one, of, or verse, chapter number 15, verse number one, Second Chronicles, the Bible said, and the Spirit of God came. We can just stop right there and preach all night long. And next week, God came tonight. I felt it. It was sweet. It was a rushing mighty wind. And, and I needed it. I'm glad it came. But the Bible said the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And, and he went out to meet Asa. And he said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him... He will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But, but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found yeah. with them. Yeah. And in those times, there was no peace yeah. to him that went out or to him that came in. But great vexations was upon all the inhabitants yeah. of the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation, and, and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let, your, and let not your hands be weak, for, ye, for your work shall be rewarded. Amen. And when Asa heard these, prophecies, heard these words and the prophecy of Obed the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of all the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord Amen. that was before the porch of the Lord. Father, Amen. we thank you and we praise you for who and all that you are, Lord. We thank you so much for, for the good songs of Zion we've heard, Lord, for the sweet spirit and the encouragement. Lord, you've already given you messenger tonight and just ask you to help us for the next few minutes. Lord God, speak to your people. Strength and encourage, Lord God, remind us how good that you are tonight. We we'll praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Yeah. We already kind of looked there in verse 1 a little bit. I got ahead of myself. I do that a lot. But in verse number 1, we see the spirit of the Lord came upon on. And I'm glad that it came upon men in that day and time. I'm glad that the Spirit of God is still moving tonight. The same Jesus, amen. He said, I'll not leave you comfortable. My Father will send you another comforter. And then we know that in the, in, the, in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, we see the Holy Spirit as a rushing mighty wind moving in. I'm glad the night that God came to where I was and He called me by name. I'm glad He put that same sweet spirit inside of me. And He saved me and He sealed me. Amen. He's taking good care of me. I'm glad for all that. I'm thankful for who it is. But I got to thinking that what you and I need more than anything. We don't need new movement. We don't need new music. We don't need new methods. We need the same sweet spirit. Amen. Moving from breast to breast, from heart to heart, from home to home. We need some folks filled with the right spirit. Amen. There's so many tonight. I'm afraid they're like the disciples. They know not what spirit they're of. Amen. They talk godly one minute and talk this way the next minute. They live one way and act another. Amen. I'm talking about people filled with the spirit of God. Right. Amen. The Spirit came, amen. amen. I'm glad that it did. Yeah. Verse number two, watch this. Watch him, and he went out to meet Asa. You remember yeah. when God saved you? Yeah. That same sweet spirit that yeah. moved right here, this same Jesus, yeah. amen. When he came to you, what was the first thing you wanted to do? If you truly got saved, Brother Ross, I'm worried about this crowd that gets out. I don't care what they pray or what they say. If they don't want to get up and tell you about Jesus and tell you about the greatest thing that ever happened, I'm afraid nothing ever happened. Yeah. I didn't know what to tell that night. But I knew something happened inside of me and it was changing the outside yeah. of me. And everybody that I kind of ran, I just want to tell about this man called Jesus. Amen. One that loved me when I was unlovable. One that died for me when I was already dead. Amen. One that was willing to give me life. Amen. 
one that came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But after he received the Spirit, he went and told what the Lord had done for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what he told him? And he went out to meet Asa and he said unto him, Hear you me, Asa, and all of Judah and Benjamin, man, he's telling cities and towns far and abroad. And he's telling them all. What's he telling them? The Lord is with you while you're with him. And if you seek him, he may be found. Ain't that, ain't that our testimony? Ain't that what we ought to be telling people? There's a God in heaven tonight. He gave me son for you. You must be born again. Amen. And if you'll seek him, you can find him. I'm glad he's not hiding, aren't you? I wouldn't know where to look. Amen. Man, I'm talking about somebody can go through walls and go in rooms and go to heaven and go to earth and go to hell for that matter and do all these things. He can go anywhere, but I'm glad he's not hiding from me tonight. Amen. He makes himself funny. The Henderson's used to sing that song, Standing Somewhere in the Shadow. You'll find Jesus. Amen. Nobody ever cared like Jesus. No. Nobody ever will care like Jesus. Amen. Amen. But I began to think about that. Well, that, that was the testimony. What a message that would be. I'm talking about a war riddled country. I'm talking about a troubled people, a burdened people. These are God's people, amen. But here he comes and he said, Hey, I've got good news for you, Sister Francis. There's a God in heaven and he's with you and he's for you and he can be found, amen. He can be found. Amen. Aren't you glad it can be found? Yes, sir. When your world and your life's falling apart, aren't you glad there's hope to be found, there's help yes. to be found, there's healing to be found, there's yes. grace to be yes. found, there's mercy to be found? No wonder His grace does much more about Him. Yes. Because He can be found. Amen. But that's not all that He said. The Lord's with you while you be with Him. And if you seek Him, you can, He can be found. But He gave Him a warning too, didn't He? Mm -hmm. But if you forsake mm -hmm. it, forget, brother. And I would like to stand here before you. I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to stand up here tonight, sis, and say I've never forsook God. Yeah, but I'd be a liar. Amen. I'd like to stand up here tonight, brother Willie, and say I've never failed God. Lord, but I'd be a liar. Amen. But can I tell you tonight, He's never failed me. Amen. He's always been faithful. Yeah. He's always done more than his part. He's always been more than enough. He's always been right there. He's always been faithful. He's always been tried and tested. He's always been true. Brother Pete, he's always been more than enough. He's always been more than enough. Preach what you need, Jesus. Just need Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Amen. Just give me Preacher, Jesus. Amen. He'll make all the difference. Right. Amen. Preacher, what's he saying here? And he'll forsake you. He's saying, I've got the way I've got it wrote down up here. I wrote a simple note. God's not going to bless a mess. He's not going to bless any of lifestyle. That's right. That's right. There was a time when, when he kind of turned away from Satan. There was even a time, Brother Woody, I read that he kind of giggled at it maybe just a little bit. But there's coming a time that God's going to judge sin. Amen. God was serious about sin's payment yeah. when he put That's his right. son on Calvary. And God's going to be serious about sin's punishment on the day of judgment. So don't forget, amen, God won't forsake you. God's not going to fail you, amen. Right. Right. Time to get serious yeah. about serving God. Yeah. Notice they begin to witness and they begin to testify yeah. to those around them. Yeah. You know what we need to do is more than anything today, tell them to tell God that loves them. Amen. Preacher, they've heard it before. How many times did you heard it before you accepted yeah. it? Yeah, preach it, brother. See, the yeah. thing was, maybe their war is just not big enough yet. Yeah. Maybe they've just not got down far enough. Preacher, you don't know how far they are yet, yeah, but God does. That's right. Yeah. My hand's short. My strength's limited. Amen. Amen. I'm weak, but I'm glad he's still strong. Okay. Yeah. If there's still life in them, if there's still breath in their body, and he's still sitting on the throne, Amen. there's still hope. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus still saved. Amen. Verse number three. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. Mm -hmm. Brother, look, I read that phrase and I thought, man, something has to be wrong. These are God's chosen people. These are God's elect. At this point in time in Second Chronicles, they're as saved as you can be, if you will. But they were without God. They were in the middle of a war. Yeah. Man, they're surrounded. Everybody's their enemy yeah. because of God, and they don't even have God on their side. Yeah. Why is that? 
That's because of their eyes. That's because of the way they chose to live and the way they yeah. chose yeah. to do. Yeah. So you know what I thought about when I read that, Miss Brenda? These people missed out on the blessings of God. Right. Mm -hmm. These people made life harder than it had to be because they wouldn't just surrender and serve God. Amen. You know what I thought, Brother Gary? How many times have I done that? Yeah. Yeah. How many times would it just been easier just to let go and let God? Amen. How many times have I said, God, I've got this. Hey, your will's not what mine is, and I know what's going to work out better for me. I'm not not audibly said that, but I thought in my mind because I knew what I wanted. I knew what this flesh, this Adamic nature wanted, what it desired, and it still does yeah, desire tonight. Yeah. They used to sing a song, the old man's dead, and that sounds good and well, but he's still alive and well as long as you got this flesh told you tonight. I wish he had died when I got saved and had been over with. We find a warfare tonight if you're saved. Mm -hmm. sure. Amen. And my biggest enemy tonight is not Satan. It's me. It's me. There's an old preacher uptown who used to preach all the time. He'd talk about everybody that was saved had two dogs living inside of them, a black one and a white. And he said they was constantly warring against one another. He said the only good thing about that fight is you get to decide who wins. Right. Mm -hmm. The one you feed the most. You right. talking about the other one today. You, and preacher, I, everybody looking at me like I've lost my mind. Maybe I have, but what did Paul say? Every time I went to do good, evil was present with me. I used to joke for years he had to be married and was talking about his wife, but that wasn't scripture. That wasn't life. Paul said, I crucify my flesh daily. Amen. Why did he do that? As good a man as Paul was. Because he had the same endemic nature you and I have. He had the same desires. He had the same mind. Amen. And it'd be real easy at times to take off after that thing. But they've been for a long time without God. And notice the results of, of not having God. Why didn't they have God, preacher? And without a teaching priest. And without law. What was law in that day? Yeah. It was the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. So in reality, how did they get away from God? They got away from the Word of God. Amen. How do we get away from God in the day and hour we're living in? Amen. The earth's his footstool. Where are you going to go that he can't find you? How are you going to get away from God? By getting away from the Word of God. Amen. When you take away your praying and your meditation time and all devotional time and your reading and studying, you get away from church a little while, you start getting away from God. I'm not Amen. talking about I'm talking about losing your salvation. I'm talking about losing your fellowship. I'm talking about losing your peace. I'm talking about losing your joy. I'm talking about losing your power. Amen. This is God's chosen elect people. The apple of God's eye. The one that he loves. And they're in the midst of a war without God. After all God had done for them, Brother Pete. Yeah, bless you. He brought them out that he might bring them in. He brought them through mountains and valleys and times of darkness and times of despair and through all the plagues and, yeah. and everything else. And right now in their time of need, they don't even have God. Yeah. I wonder how many times in my life I've got away from God. I'm not talking about going out and getting drunk, going out and doing something wicked. I'm just talking about not doing what I ought to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I'm talking about still sitting on the pew, still standing behind the pulpit, still singing songs. Yes, preaching But not having my heart right with God, not mm -hmm. having the fellowship that right. I need. Amen. Help him we can blame the devil, we can blame the year, we can blame anything we want to. But it's me, O oh Lord, to stand yeah. in prayer. Yeah. God, it's my fault. My pastor used to say all the time, he said, you can have all the God you want. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. problem is you don't want God. Amen. When your world's falling apart, when your life's falling apart, when you're at the hospital, when you're at the cemetery, boy, you want God. <coughs> but the rest of the time, you want yourself. You want it your way. I'm selfish. I should be selfless, but I'm selfish. But they got away from God's Word, so therefore they didn't have the true God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, Word with God, and the Word was what? God. Amen. This right here. God. Amen. Amen. You've got a copy of him in your hand. Amen. The thing Amen. is, if they didn't have the Word of God, in reality, they didn't have anything to teach anyway, so they really didn't need to teach and preach. Preaching. Right. I've heard many preachers that should have just sit down and shut up a long time ago. You might be thinking about me tonight, and that's fine. 
But they didn't have the Word of God to share. They got up, they told you stories, they told you their thought, they give you their opinion. Man, we do that in a coffee shop somewhere. My world, my life's falling apart. I need to hear from heaven. Give me the Word of God. Amen. Give me the Word of God. I begin to think, man, that out of all that Israel was, out of all that they had been, the favor, the blessings, all these things God has bestowed upon them, and the shape that they had gotten in because they had gone away from God. And I got a vision in my mind. You know what vision I saw? I didn't see Israel. I said in my study, I said an American flag. Right. I'm talking about a country that was built upon this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a country that was founded upon yeah. the Word of God and godly principles and godly freedom. Mm -hmm. One that was founded upon morals and standards straight out of this book that's gone away from God. One that's calling evil good and good evil. Yeah. And I wonder, man, I look up toward Washington and every time I look, I see a joke. Yeah. It's not a funny one either. Amen. I thought, how did we get in the shape that we see? Mm -hmm. And I want to blame the Democrats or the Republicans or the Independents or this group, but it ain't politicians' fault. No. I want to blame the school system, and I want to blame this, and I want to blame that, and I want to blame whoever. But it's not their fault. Once again, you know whose fault it is? It's my fault. Amen. If I was who I was, doing what I was supposed to do all along. Right. They took prayer out of school. Right. Prayer was gone long before that. You ain't got to tell me I can pray. Right. I can pray anywhere I want to, anytime I want to. Yeah, Most of the time, I just don't want to pray. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Yeah. Well, I can't bow down here and do it. I, I, time out. We do not need public displays of religion. Right. We need true, born-again believers sold out and surrendered yeah, to God. Yeah. I don't care if you see me and I'm reading my Bible. I don't care if you see me. I'm just Look at how I live my life and see if I live God. Amen. I should not have to tell you tonight that I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. If you're around me very long, you ought to know. Amen. I shouldn't have to have a, a big cross necklace. Or, and if you got that, that's fine. I'm not beating that up. But that shouldn't be the way you find out that I'm a Christian. I shouldn't have to have a bumper sticker that says, follow me to church. If you got one again, that's fine. But you shouldn't, I shouldn't have to have that Pretty if you know that I belong to church. Yeah. We've made everything so... We've done it like Christmas. We've commercialized Christianity. We've made it all about what we can do and what we are. We've done just like Israel. We forgot who he is. We forgot what he does. We forgot how faithful that he truly is. We've got that spare tire. We've got that first aid kit over there. Jesus, if our world and our life falls apart, man, we'll go over and open it up and get some little band-aid out. He's far more than any of that. Preach you, Lord. Bless you. Preach you, sir. I begin to think about how that we was once a godly nation. Mm -hmm. But when we put away the truth, That's right. God departs. Yeah. Why? Because he's truth. Amen. Amen. People you say all the time, and the truth shall make you free. That's not what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. The truth is no good, Brother Woody, except you know it. Yeah. Jesus said, and knowing the truth, shall make you free. Yeah. And he who the Son is made free is free indeed. The truth in itself is no good. You can keep your Bible on the table at home, closed up, covered in dust. You can leave it in the pew at church. You can leave it in your car at home. You can put it wherever you want to. But if you don't get it out, get it in your heart. It's never going to make a difference. Amen. 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 Verse 4, but when they but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found Amen. of them. Amen. Amen. Can, can I read that again? Yeah. Real slow. But when they, who? The ones that had turned away from God, the ones that had been without God, the ones that had failed God, the ones that had sinned, the ones that had come short. But when they, in their trouble, I want you to notice that. Whose trouble was this, Brother Woody? It wasn't God's. Because when they went their way, it wasn't God's will. It wasn't God's path. It wasn't God's plan. So they couldn't blame God for it. In their trouble, Miss Christie, they brought it upon themselves. It's 
real easy for me to sit back tonight and say, boy, this one wrong me, and that one done that, and that one, and, and everything else. It'd be real easy. But a lot of times, if I wasn't there to begin with, yeah, that's right. that would have never that's happened. Right. Amen. I brought it upon myself. And I can get mad at God. I can get mad at the church. I can get mad at the preacher. I can get mad at the deacon or whoever else. It ain't going to make no difference. It's between me and God. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found up. Mm -hmm. So you know what I try to do now? Whether I see trouble, whether I don't see trouble, but especially when I see it. Jesus, where are you at? Jesus, where are you at? I see a storm coming. I see headache, I see heartache, I see trouble, I see a burden. God, I want to know you're right here with me. God, I want to know that this is the path you have for me. God, I want to know I'm going the right direction. Because I don't want this to be my trouble. I want this to be his trouble. Because I know he's going to take care of his trouble. He'll take care of mine too most of the time to get me back where he needs me. But I don't want this to be trouble that he sent his judgment to, to try to get me back where he needs me. I've got enough trouble on my own, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Notice, even though they were in trouble, when they turned to God and truly saw Him, they found Him. I began to think once again. By the time I read those verses in my study, I said, "Our country's in trouble. Yes, it our counties, our communities are in trouble. Yes, but it's not just them. Our churches. Yeah, yeah. Right. Amen." We need some men that will stand and get behind this desk right here and preach it to men as they are, as it's written. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Lord. We need somebody to just get up here and love. Yeah. And just tell you what thus saith the Word of God. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I feel. Bless it doesn't Lord. matter what I like. It doesn't matter what I dislike. Bless Jesus said it, amen. 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 And that settles it whether we believe it or not. Bless you, amen. Lord. I begin to think, even in the midst of all of our trouble, well, this nation, they turned to God, and we'll see here in a minute, God answered, God healed, yeah. God heard, God delivered. So I begin to think, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, when they just get down before God, as His children, as His people, and not even pray what I want or what I like, God, what is it you want? God, is what is it you want? I don't know how much life I've got left. I'm excited. I feel for those people in Ukraine. But you hear Iran start roaring over there a little bit. And China's starting to wake up up there and move around. I'm starting to get real excited. Preacher, why is that? Because I'm heaven mad. It could be feet before the night's over. I don't know. And that'd be just fine. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. But especially. In these last days that we're living in. Yes. Knowing all the troubles and sorrows and burdens. I want to be what God wants me to be. Amen. Amen. Because one day after a little while, I'm going to stand before him. Right. Yes. And I'm going to give an account for every deed done in this body. He's going to say, preacher, you knew the truth. I gave you the whole countenance of God. I give you every bit of it. Yeah. What did you do with it? And I'm going to have my heart broke on that day and everything's going to be burned up and on my fire. I hope in those ashes, though, there's some reward in there. Yeah. But not long after that, there's going to be another throne set up for the wood. The seals is going to be removed. The books is going to be open. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a great lion standing up there. Depart from me, you that work in me. I never knew. Husbands, wives, children, grandchildren, co-workers. Bless him, Lord. They're going to walk up and they're going to walk back up. Yes, Lord. I don't care who they are. Bless I don't him, care Lord. where they've been. I don't care what they've done. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. That's right. Amen. I just would like to see another one get in. Amen. Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. Amen. That's why he came was to seek and to save Amen. that which was in the Thank you, Lord. No, you're not. He said he must be about the Father's business, so what should you and I be about? Yeah. Father's business. I believe if we truly turn to God wholeheartedly, yes. that he would hear from heaven. He would Amen. Verse number five. The Bible said in those times there was no peace to him that went out. But to him that came in. Amen. 
Once again, this ain't a lost sinner. This ain't somebody out in the world. This is God's people. Yep. So if they're not above this, how are you and I above this? Mm -hmm. You know how many days I've been without peace? You, you know how many long nights that I've had? didn't matter if I was coming or I was going. There wasn't any peace to be had. Yes. And in those, in those times, there was no peace. When? When you was away from God. Those were the times. When you get away from Him, there is no peace. Right. Right. This world's looking for peace, but they're looking in the wrong place. Bless him, Lord. <clears throat> More to him that came in. Bless him, Lord. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Yeah. Of the countries. So the whole world, if you will, him, all of the countries are without peace. That word vexation, just in case you was wondering, I'll give you a definition. It means commotion. It means confusion. It means turmoil. It means trouble. It means destruction. It means panic. Did we just cut the news on right in the middle of the sermon? <laughs> Is that not what they'd tell you? Amen. They wouldn't use the word vexation. Probably too biblical for them, or they'd be like, man, wouldn't understand it anyway, so I had to break it down so I could understand it. But this sounds like our day in our country. Not much peace, but a lot of problems. Seems like everyone's seeking after peace, after joy. Yes. But it can't be found. Amen. Right. I haven't been to a Bible bookstore lately. That's what they call them. That's what the sign says. When I go inside and see what they're selling, I'm glad they put the sign outside. Or it's like most of the Christian networks or radio right. things. I wouldn't know they were Christian unless it said in the title mm -hmm. know what they're selling. Pretty but let me walk you down one of the aisles there. I'm not walking very well, but let me walk you down one of the aisles right there. Right. You know what the first aisle is probably going to say if we was to walk down the bookstore over here tonight? How to find peace. Yeah. How to get joy, how to get this, how to get that. And they're going to have some Joel Osteen, sissified, watered down, and even gospel that they're going to try to give you to find peace. Yeah, you're right. yeah. Lord. They're going to give you some health and wealth and prosperity, but they ain't going to be able to give you peace. What do I do if I ain't got no health? What do I do if I ain't got no wealth? You can't have no peace. Send a hundred dollars, send a thousand dollars. What if I ain't got that? There's a great big build over next to my brother Ross's house. And every time I drive by there, I've never seen a Bible verse on it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Big fancy billboard, thousands of people, three or four or five services a week. But you know what I have seen this call, this selling out? That I thought it was Thompson Ball Arena or something for a long time. They had a, a marriage thing there a while back to help out with people's marriages. Man, if you paid them $500, mm -hmm. you could come in and they would help with your marriage. And I thought, boy, that sounds good to the flesh, but wait a minute. I've sat down and counseled a couple of people. Brother Ross, you know what? A lot of the problems I found in marriage is when I counsel people. Well, that too, but money. Yeah. So in other words, Brother Woody, if I didn't have $500, I didn't care about my marriage. Right. It's about time to turn the tables over, church! It's not about money! Right. It's about Jesus. Amen. I remember when those men went into a town one time, they didn't have enough money to pay their taxes. You know what? Jesus took care of it, didn't he? <laughs> no. Yeah, he? he didn't tell Peter, sorry about your luck. Peter, you ain't got no money. He's going to go have to put you in prison or go in debtor's jail over there. Sorry. He took care of it. And that man, that's all I care about. The love of money is what? The root of all evil. Yeah. But if I hear talk about a church, that's all I care about. My cousin and her husband several years ago, I witnessed to them, talked with them. They supposedly got saved or whatever. Uh, joined this church down in the North City. They went in there that first Sunday morning or whatever and talked with the preacher. And the first thing he asked was, where do you work at? How much money do you make? Mm. <clears throat> we need to copy your W-2 form. <laughs> and all that stuff, so we know how much charge you ever Never one time asked if you knew Jesus. Never one time asked if you'd been born again. Why? They didn't care. Right. Preach it, brother. All that was free. It wasn't that important. I guess it turned out. Amen. Well, I'm talking about commotion, confusion. Well, we know God's not the author of confusion. That's right. That's right. But there was a great vexation. Yeah. They're looking for peace and joy, but it can't be found. Peace is only found yeah. in God. There's a peace of God that passes all understanding. Yeah. And I got this, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I wrote this down here in corner of this piece of paper. My mood... And my mindset tells a lot about my fellowship with God. Amen. 
My mood and my mindset tells a lot about my fellowship with God. Think about that. If I'm in a horrible mood and I'm all bitter, I ain't been real close to Jesus for a little while. That's right. When they brought those disciples in and they whipped them and they scourged and they rejoiced that they was found worthy. Yeah. And they said they considered that they was foolish and they was ignorant and unlearned, but they knew they'd been with Jesus. Amen. There's a lot of people think I'm ignorant and unlearned and they're right. Yeah. But I know Jesus, so I know enough to be known. That's right. Yeah. Amen, brother. If I'm worried about this and fearing that and wondering about everything else, you know what my problem is? I'm not trusting Jesus. Hey, it's pretty humble. Verse 6, we got to hurry. We ain't going to get anywhere. John said, tell me the video has been over for 30 minutes. That's all right. We'll ask him more. And notice the results of being without God and the vexation. Bless we see Lord. their attitudes towards Bless another. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Now, I want you to realize when it says nation and cities are falling and destroyed, that's not talking about buildings. Bless him, Lord. It's talking about people. People being destroyed. People dying. How is God's people destroyed again? From a lack of knowledge. They got away from the word of God. They got away from the truth. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And his people destroyed by a lack of knowledge. So now the whole world's falling apart. Why? Because they've got away from God. Amen. Huh. Y'all ever think history might repeat itself sometime? Pretty few more. But we see this. They're destroyed. People are destroyed without God. Yeah. See, the world has a form of wisdom and has a form of godliness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it denies the power right. thereof. Yeah. And he said, from such, turn away. Yeah. Amen. Verse number seven. I've got her. Verse number seven. The Bible says, no, preacher, what do we need to do during these times? Do we need to just wring our hands to chew off our fingernails, pull out what little hair we got left? What do we need to do? Be you strong. When the world's falling around you, be you therefore, be you strong therefore. And let not your hands be weak. Watch him, Lord. Why? For your work shall be rewarded. Do you know what that is, church? Amen. You can take that to the bank. You can mark it down. That is a promise. Amen. Your work shall be rewarded. Amen. It shall be. But preacher, I can't do but this much. God knows what you can do. Yeah. God knows where he's got you at. God remembers what he told you to do. Yeah. No matter how big or mighty or how small or simple it might be. God knows. And you know what? That's what he's going to reward you for. I've worked this job and this job and these jobs and some of them you go out there and you kill yourself. Sometimes you might stand in the road and hold a flag. Some days you might do this, that. Some days you might just sit in the truck and look out the window. But you know what? They still pay you by the hour. They still pay you the same amount of money. As long as you do what the boss tells you, there's still a reward coming yeah. in. Yeah. Not all preach. Not all teach. Not all sing. Not all play instruments. Not all are physically able. But you know what? There's a work for all. Amen. And there's a reward for all. Yeah. I read one time that he's going to come and he's going to bring his reward with Amen. him. Amen. Amen. He's going to rise one day with healing in his wings and he's going to gather up all his jewels, yeah. church. And we're going to get there and we'll say it's been worth it after all. Amen. It's been worth every mile. It's been worth every trial. It's been worth every valley that we face. Amen. Been worth it, church. Yeah. Be strong, he said. You know what that means? That means keep going. Yeah. Let your hands, let not your hands be weak. Don't quit or to be off the I began to think in the New Testament, he warned us to not grow weary in well doing. Why? But for in due season we'd reap if we faint not. Amen. There's a payday Sunday. Verse number eight. We've got to hurry. Bless him, Lord. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obed the prophet, you know what he did? He took courage. Amen. Why is that? Because the word of God gives courage. Amen. I don't know how long it's been since he got a message from heaven, but he got one right here. Heaven opened up and glory fell down. And when he heard these words, 
He received courage. Amen. Aren't you glad the Word of God still gives courage Amen. in a time of weakness? It gives help and hope in the times that we need it. I'm glad God knows what we need. Church, you know what we need tonight? We need a Word from God. Amen. Just need God to speak to us. Just God to speak one little word. It might be go on. It might be don't quit. It might be stand up. It might be sit down. It might be like some of y'all saying shut up. I don't know. But whatever it is God wants to say tonight. Amen. If we'd hear that and heed that, it would make all the difference. Verse number eight. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obed, he took courage and notice the repentance. And he put away the abominable idol out of the land of Judah and Benjamin. And out of all the cities which he had taken, everything he had power over. All the cities, all the time. Well, preacher, I don't have power. No, but you've got it over your own home. You've got power over your own home. What you bring in, what you take out, and what you do or what you don't do, you've got power over that. Remember when I first got saved, I went through my wardrobe. There wasn't nobody told me how to dress. I got to thinking, when I wear this today, and I'm not talking about just a plain t-shirt or whatever. I had things that, that nobody should ever wear. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to get into to detail. But you know what I did? I offered some burnt offerings. <laughs> I offered some sacrifices. God didn't require them. But he was like, why didn't you give that to somebody? That was an expensive shirt. Why don't I want some house dressed up for the devil? That's right. That's right. I said, God, how do you want me to look? Yes, Lord. How do you want me to dress? I belong to you. I'm no longer my own. I belong to you. Man, I don't want my car to take off going wherever it wants to go. I want it to say, hey, I'm starting up for you. Which direction you want to go? Just turn the wheel. Just press the gas. What would it be like if you got out there tonight and your car just took off down the road and said, I don't want to go to the house. I want to go here. That's what we try to do, God. That's right. Preach it, bro. Bless you. But he removed Love these you. things. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying we've got some things we need to remove. Amen. Yeah. There's some things that we've brought into our lives and into God's church that God's not pleased with. <coughs> it's all his, amen. He made it all. <coughs> He's over all. And he put away all these things and, and notice what he did next. And he renewed the altar of the Lord. They hadn't heard the word of God. I wonder when the last time was this in the altar. <coughs> I ask you tonight. When's the last time you heard the word of God and it brought you to the altar? See, there's one thing to hear the word of God. It's another thing to heed or to do the word of God. He told us to not be hearers only, but to be doers of the word. Well, you know how many times I've sat in service and I've heard a preacher preach his guts out and I thought, brother, what, boy, that sure was a good mess. That's a good Sunday school lesson, good lesson, good whatever. Well, and I heard the devil take it away from me because I went and ate lunch and I went and done this and I never prayed on it or about it or whatever. And then the next well, night I was like, yeah. and talking to somebody I said, Do you not hear a word the preacher said Sunday? Man, he preached on exactly what you're living. Yeah. Well, God knows where you are and what you're facing. He knows what you have need of. And he's faithful to give that. Preacher, what happened here? Asa realized mm -hmm. that God was still faithful. Yeah, amen. And that God still honored faithful servant. Many times we find ourselves in trouble, I'm afraid, because we're not faithful to God. Yes, preacher. I begin to think how we need to fully surrender to the will and to the work of God and put away idle and seek Him while He may be found. Yes. And I believe He'll help us. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 the Bible said redeeming the time because the days are evil yeah. we must get back to the book we must get back to the altar we must get back yeah. to the prayer closet yeah. and get back to witnessing about God and his goodness I understand that we're tired I understand that we're weary I understand that we're not getting any younger but the reality is we can't faint or quit or we can't claim the promises of 